going to say uh, have an injury update here for you guys. Uh, Kari, uh, blasting game, and Lucas have been full the last two days. They look great, you know, so they're they're on track to play. It's great uh, news for us. Uh, Deontay Foreman, we're still waiting to see again. He's been limited the last couple days. Uh, we'll see where that goes in the next forty eight hours. Um, and again, it's all going to be depending on, on how that goes in the next forty eight hours. And then, uh, you know, you guys see that Noah's out again. And then Tyreek Stevenson tweaked his ankle uh, during practice on the turf. So, uh, again, he's getting that evaluated right now. And we'll see where that is in terms of the, you know, severity of it or, you know, uh, his, his ability to play. So we'll see. Okay. Um, you know, a solid week of practice. You know, we had that bonus day in there, which was good. We had the extra walkthrough day, which was, I think, was really good for preparation starting on Wednesday, a normal Wednesday practice, and then working through to that. Uh, Thanksgiving Day, I thought we did a nice job cleaning up the, you know, the corrections we need to do on the first and second down day, and then working forward to our, uh, you know, really third down and two minute, you know, some uh, specialty situations going into Thursday, um, and then Thursday was a solid practice along with today. So, um, you know, guys have a lot of preparation to go. You know, I always talk about, you know, having their, their body, getting their body right to, you know, preparing their minds. You know, I always tell them that separation is in our preparation in the last 48 hours. You know, and then really getting their getting their spirit right, getting their passion right for the game, so we come out and play with great energy because that's a, a, a really good uh, the winning edge. Um, um, you know, is, is to have that. You got to have that winning edge to be able to play with passion uh, during the game, and that's a build up process for each individual player. And the guys will be in the process of doing that as we go through these next forty eight hours. Uh, so with that, open up to questions. Matt, do you feel like Tremaine is good to go, one hundred percent, or is he going to be on rotation again? Yeah, I do feel. Uh, Tremaine is ready to go uh, just by the way he looks, you know, he looks quick. Uh, he's got his speeds back and uh, he feels good, you know, and uh, looks good on, on practice. So we, we're pleasantly uh, happy, you know, that he's uh, on track. The, the Vikings are the first team you've played to that you've played before. I'm just curious as a coach how you feel about rematches as a measurement of your of your coaching, of your coaching and your staff to, to be able to respond to what – the other team did, and to anticipate what they might do, you sure. know that chess match. How do you, how, how do you value that? How do you view that as a coach? Yeah, I do value that. Uh, that's that's an important thing uh, when you're playing division. You know, division opponents. You know, you get that every single year, and uh, you know you've been in, I've been in a league a while, and certainly went against uh, different offenses multiple times, and and you certainly have to you know change your looks and change your the way you do things, and and certainly adjust. Um, and it's no different on offense, you know, and, you know, certainly on offense, we have to do a better job with the protections, you know, and do a better job with the pressure looks. And our guys have worked, uh, worked the tail off on that. And, uh, you know, so we'll see where it is, but it, it looked good all week. Uh, the, with Terrell Smith coming back last week, you guys worked him in. Um, if he's got to step in for Tyreek, what, what do you like about him? Yeah, uh, Terrell has, has looked good, you know, all the way back into training camp. You know, he's uh, mature about, beyond his, his years. Uh, you know, he takes things in stride. Uh, he he's, takes coaching really well. You know, so, you know, Coach Hoke's uh, a really good corners coach, you know, for a long time, and he's, he's done that for a while, and um, he really soaks everything in. You know, so he's technique sound, fundamentally sound, and uh, he's got really good speed. And we like his size, you know, being able to play against bigger receivers. You know, so that's kind of a trend in the league, you know, those big type receivers, and he does a, he does a good job against those guys. Matt, when you see this Vikings team now compared to the one you played in week six, how different or how similar is this Vikings team as you look at it now? Yeah, I think scheme-wise, very similar. Um, you know, you know, obviously with a changing quarterback, they've adjusted, you know, to the quarterback's strengths, and you can certainly see that. Uh, defensively, pretty much the same um, with a little bit more multiplicity. Um, you know, they've changed a couple looks and some different pressure packages, but um, pretty much the same. And... Uh, you know, we'll see with where Justin, is, if Jefferson's in or not. And, you know, certainly they didn't have him last time. But, again, that's uh, we have a contingency plan for that if he is. Um, I know he's been limited all week, and we'll see where it goes. They called him questionable a couple minutes ago. And they're taught – do you – how much do you read or do you have somebody read about just kind of the tenor of what they say about him uh, when you guys try to guess just how much you have to be worried about him? Yeah, you're always mindful of what the other team's doing and saying. You know, you always have somebody monitor that or, or people that monitor that and give you back the news and, and what's been said uh, during the course of the week, and I think everybody does that. Um, but we'll see where it is, and, you know, certainly a great player, you know, one of the best receivers, uh, you know, in the business. 
And, uh, you know, we've worked on, on if he is or if he isn't, you know, so we'll be, we'll be ready. Is it complicating that they don't have to take him off IR until 3 o'clock on Monday, or does that give you a little more lead time than 90 minutes before the game? No, I think you just have to prepare that he's, he's going to be in there. You know, I really do. I just think you have to prepare that he's in there, and then if he's not, then you just adjust accordingly. Now with uh, Tyreek, obviously he had two, the two big plays last game, but sorry, my voice is. <laughs> um, but where have you seen the most growth from him just overall over the first? Did you go to a college game, Colleen? <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Oh, okay, all right, I got you. Yeah, yeah, the growth of Tyreek. Yeah, it's it's been really good. It's been solid. You know, you play corner in the NFL as a rookie. You know, first of all, they're gonna they're gonna highlight you and they're gonna come at you the, for the first you know half of the season, you know, to test your water and see what it's like. And I think he's responded. You know, he's had some battles. You know, he's he's lost some of those battles. He's won a good portion of those. And and the biggest thing with him is that you have to learn, right? You have to keep learning and put it into your 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 file so you you become a better pro. Um, and you can't – what he was really good about him is he plays one play at a time. He just flushes the play and goes to the next one, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and that's the way you got to be as a corner. you got to have a short memory and then just keep moving because every single week it's a different set. Every single down it's a different set of people you're covering. And everybody puts, you know, a different set of circumstances in front of you in terms of their skill level. And uh, he's learned how to adapt his skill to the people he's covering um, and really what uh, what's effective against that particular receiver. The, the, the guys were talking about how – um, you know, they're curious to see how you guys respond to a, to a pretty rough loss from last week. Mm -hmm. and they said, you know, practice has been good. Everybody kind of puts their head down. How do you monitor for those things? You know, in what ways are your radar up? And it's such human, human nature to, to be crushed by something like that. How do, you, how do you get them to try and turn the page? Yeah, you just address it, right? You know, so on, on Monday after the game, I addressed it and I talked about, you know, that is a is a painful uh, loss and the way to lose. And over the course of, you know, a long career, you might have one or two of those uh, during the course of your career. And you got to really think about, you know, your your body and your spirit, get your body right, get the spirit right to come back in on Wednesday. And that was my charge to those guys to make sure that they they rejuvenate and get ready to go and have passion when they come into the building and enthusiasm to to really uh, you know put it out there on the practice field because that's all you have is the practice field. And they did an awesome job, you know, on that Wednesday, you know, then taking the break on Thursday with the walkthrough and they're they they were driven, they were determined, and they were locked in in, in uh, each of their uh, individual meetings and most importantly what you see on the practice field and uh, it, it was good. So uh, you can definitely tell it that that way. So you don't feel like there's any threat of a letdown? I don't, okay. no. Matt, piggybacking off of Colleen's question about Tyreek, the rookie class as a whole has had some good moments and some bad moments, especially last week. Darnell played really well for 59 minutes. He gives up the sack. Tyler has the, mis the misjudged pass. How do you evaluate this group's ability to digest those tough lessons and learn from them quickly? Yeah, I just see the way they respond. You know, it is one thing to react to something, you know, in the heat of the moment. You know, I always tell guys that you have to, you know, step back after the performance and look at it with your coach, you know, with a clear eye, and then really look to improve on that. And that's what you have to do as a rookie, you know, because there's a lot of things that can come at you, you know, if you pay attention to too many things. And what's important is what's on tape and what you and your coach are saying about the technique and the fundamentals. And that's really where you leave it. And then you go right to the practice field and work on those fundamentals and techniques. You can't listen to all the other outside noise because there will be a lot, you know, as a rookie for sure, um, you know, especially at certain positions. And, uh, you know, left tackle, right tackle, you know, like Braxton was last year or playing defensive back like, you know, uh, Kyler or Stevenson or all the guys that have played – at young, at young time for us. So uh, they just got to really focus on that and be in the moment, and that's how you get better. Hey Matt, so much has been made this week of the mindset of the team being able to close games. Yeah. But are, do you also espouse that, that, that your best players on your roster, you have to trust them to come through in the clutch times as well? Yeah, that, that's it's hand in hand, right? So it's really about you know us doing a really good job of setting the players up to make the plays and putting them in position to make the plays, and then the players going out and making those plays. You know, you can watch that during the course of any NFL weekend of the games we just saw. Uh, there's plays being made by the playmakers at the end of the game, and the coaches are putting those guys in position to do that. So those, that's what closes out games. How significant would it be for you to get the uh, division win? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big game, right? The next game is always the biggest game, and uh, the guys are excited about playing on Monday night, and uh, they're always big.